Welcome to Sunday School. Of course, it might not be Sunday when you're watching this. It might be Monday or Tuesday or some other time during the week. We're gathering together around God's Word on a weekly basis, just studying God's Word together. I'm in a series of messages on the parables of Jesus Christ, and we are looking at uh, parable sayings and parable similitudes and then parable stories. And uh, first, we've been focusing on these parable sayings of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus spoke uh, two parable sayings involving uh, physicians. In the first parable saying, we've already talked about when the Lord said, Physician, heal thyself. That saying is only recorded in the Gospel of Luke. The second parable saying is recorded in all three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And it's this. We see it in, in uh, Luke chapter 5 and verse 31, for example. They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Let me say that again. They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. In Christ's day, that was probably a fairly well-known saying, but Jesus used that well-known saying to teach a spiritual lesson. Of course, the spiritual lesson for us is very simple, that sinners need a Savior. Uh, sin is a sickness, and we need a physician to heal us and deliver us from that sickness, and of course, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at this a little saying, shall we? First of all, I want to talk to you about uh, the compassion in the parable, the compassion in the parable. I want you to take a look at that word whole. They that are whole need not a physician. That word whole uh, is a medical term. Of course, Luke was a physician. And when you read uh, the Gospel of Luke, uh, Luke used medical terminology throughout his uh, gospel. The word translated whole in Luke means to be sound. It means to be well, to be in good health. You see, the strong don't need a physician. The weak need a physician. Healthy people don't need a physician. Unhealthy people need a physician. So this parable presents us with two comparisons, and the first comparison is this. The Savior is compared to a physician. The Savior is compared to a physician. When Jesus taught uh, in the synagogue in Nazareth, for example, he indicated that his calling was like that of a physician. And we can read that in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Then get this. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. You see, to call Christ a physician is very appropriate because he healed the blind, he healed the lame, he healed the diseased, he healed people physically, but more importantly, he healed people spiritually. So the Savior is compared to a physician. But also I want you to see where sin is compared to sickness. Sin is compared to sickness. Calling sin a sickness is not a glamorous picture of sin, but it's an accurate one. Uh, sin brings discomfort. Sin brings disability. Sin is costly. You see the comparison to sickness? Sickness brings discomfort. Sin, sickness disables. Sickness is costly. Sickness unhealed leads to death. And so does sin. The wages of sin is death. Sin is a sickness of the soul. Man tries to call sin by healthy sounding names. If you notice that, homosexuality is referred to being gay. Adultery is called a, a, a love affair. Listen, folks, there's nothing healthy about immorality. 
There's nothing healthy about perversion. Homosexuals and adulterers are sin sick. But so is everyone who refuses to name the name of Jesus Christ. That's the comparison in the parable. But I also want you to notice the circumstances for the parable. This parable was spoken in the house of Matthew right after Matthew's conversion. Matthew received Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, and this parable saying was spoken by the Lord immediately after that experience. And there are two things inseparably linked to this parable. And the first I want you to see is feasting. Feasting. Read in Luke chapter 5, and beginning in verse 27. It says this, And after these things he went forth and saw a publican named Levi, sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he, this is Matthew, and he left all, rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with them. Now, when a person is converted, when they receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, a person is going to always desire to exalt Jesus Christ and give him great honor. The way Matthew honored Christ was to make him a great feast and introduce him to Matthew's old friends. So Matthew invited others to this feast. Having been delivered from the bondage of sin, Matthew wanted others to also be free. He knew that their souls needed what their souls needed because he had been one of them. He had been a sinner who was set free. He had been uh, a, a sinner that was in need of a physician. And now that he was healed, Matthew experienced the mercy of God. He experienced the grace and the love of God, the healing of God. So he wanted others to be acquainted with that same Savior. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 10 tells us that Christ's disciples were also invited to the feast. This reminds us that when a person becomes a follower of Jesus Christ, as Matthew did, he's going to be interested in the company of other believers as well. So not only is seeking the lost a sign of being converted to Jesus Christ, enjoying the company of other believers is also a sign of being converted. So we see this feasting but I also want you to see this fault finding. Look in Luke chapter 5 and verse 30. It says, But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, that's key, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? At the feast, the Pharisees engaged in fault finding. These religious leaders weren't interested in reaching sinners to convert them. Their intent was to stand aloof with this uh, holier-than-thou attitude. In their pride, they criticized Christ for eating with publicans and sinners. By the way, did you notice that the fault finders didn't come to Christ personally to make their criticism? Rather, they went through Christ's disciples. Look at Mark chapter 2 and verse 16. It says, when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, how is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? These critics were trying to drive a wedge between Christ and his disciples. If they were honest and if they were sincere, they would have gone to Christ directly. But they had an ulterior motive. They had an agenda. They wanted to create friction and distrust between Christ and his disciples. Now, why you listen to me very carefully? This is a common tactic of evildoers. This is a common tactic of evil critics. When someone comes to you and they criticize someone else, oftentimes they're trying to drive a wedge between you and that other person. This is a favorite tactic of church dissidents. Dissidents often go to deacons to criticize the pastor instead of going directly to the pastor. Why? Because a church dissident doesn't want to solve anything. He just wants to stir up trouble. 
people who are dissatisfied with their pastor or people who are dissatisfied with church leaders, they don't want to resolve any issues as much as they want to, you to become dissatisfied with the church leadership too. So we've looked at the compassion in the parable. We've looked at the circumstances for the parable. And now let's take a look at the communicating of the parable. When Christ overheard the Pharisees' fault-finding remarks made to the disciples at the feast, he spoke up and he answered the fault-finders with this parable about a physician. Notice the results of the parable. First, I want you to see the vindication of the Savior. Christ was acting according to his character. A physician would be found where there is work for him to do. Doesn't that make sense? A physician would be found where healing is required. As a physician, Christ's commission was to go to the sick. Now, listen, there's a kind of companionship with sinners which confirms them in their sin. In other words, there's a kind of a relationship or a companionship with sinners that approves of them in their sin. But Christ's association with sinners didn't involve a sinful situation. The purpose of Christ's companionship with sinners was to lift them up out of their sin. Christ didn't go into some bar and drink beer and play cards with the boys in order to witness to them. Come on, he didn't skip church on Sunday to go play golf with a friend as a means of witnessing to that friend. Folks, we are to be separate from the world while trying to reach others for Christ. When a physician comes in contact with a sick person in order to heal them, the physician takes some precautions so he doesn't get sick. You and I must act likewise when we come into contact with sinners trying to convert them. And I also want you to see this, the consolation for the sinner. The parable consoles sinners who desire forgiveness of their sins. Folks, the devil's plan is to convince you that your sin will prevent Christ from saving you. That's his plan. But just the opposite is true. If you feel unworthy of anything but wrath and condemnation, you're the very person Christ came to the world into the world to save. We all deserve condemnation. We all deserve the wrath of God. A physician doesn't turn a patient down because the patient's sick. Neither does Christ turn down a repentant sinner because the person is a sinner. Christ confirmed the truth when he followed the parable with these words in Mark chapter 2 and verse 17. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Folks, the truth is, all of us need a physician. Sin has infected our souls, and our soul sickness will eventually lead to death. Thank God we have a physician who can heal all of our soul's diseases. May God bless the teaching of the Word of God. Go. Tell other people about Jesus Christ. Tell sinners of their need for conversion. Gather together with friends, those that are loved ones, that know the Lord Jesus Christ, and enjoy their fellowship until he returns. May God bless you.